in June of 1830, while <clears throat> rewording some of Genesis, the choice seer received revelation, now included in the Book of Moses. Of that special revelatory moment, Joseph wrote, I will say that amid all the trials and tribulations we had to wade through, the Lord, who well knew our infantile and delicate situation, vouched safe for us a supply of strength and granted to us line upon line of knowledge, here a little and there a little, of which the following was a precious morsel. Included in that precious morsel were words of Moses further enlarging Joseph's view about how God's work involves other planets. But only in account of this earth and the inhabitants thereof give I unto you. For behold, there are many worlds that have passed away by the word of my power. The plans and purposes of God were also made more plain. For behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and the eternal life of man. Thus, the vastness of space reflects the vastness of God's love for all of his children. All human beings, male and female, are created in the image of God. Each is a beloved spirit son or daughter of heavenly parents, and as such, each has a divine nature and destiny. What we become in this life depends upon our finding the correct answers to the questions, who am I and what is my purpose on earth? Why is this life filled with trials and sorrow? The Lord answers these questions for us in the first chapter of the book of Moses. In speaking to Moses, the Lord used two phrases. The first tells us a great deal about who God is. He said of himself, I am the Lord God Almighty, and endless is my name. What do we learn from that simple sentence? He is the Lord. He has all power, and he is eternal. Then, once we know who and what he is, in another short phrase, he tells us a great deal about ourselves. To Moses and to all of us, he simply says, Thou art my son. How would the knowledge that we are the literal children of God help us know who we are and what we can become? The Lord has us look first to Him. The more we learn about Him, the better we understand ourselves and our purpose for being here. Let's compare ourselves to this tiny seed. It weighs only one six hundredth of an ounce. By looking at the seed alone, who can guess what it can become? For all we know, it could become a weed, a bush, or a tree. This is a giant sequoia, the largest living thing on earth. It is more than 3,000 years old and more than 27 stories high. This is the parent of the seed that weighs only one six hundredth of an ounce. The surest way to know what the offspring can become is to learn about the parent. We are the children of God. He is eternal and all-powerful. He created all things. From Him we have inherited a divine potential.